New South Wales government is a step closer to fulfilling one of its key election promises. It has established a panel of health and union leaders to implement safe staffing levels and nurses and midwives in the state's hospitals. The panel will first focus on emergency departments, which were overstretched, especially during the COVID pandemic. Joining me live now is the New South Wales Health Minister, Ryan Park. Ryan, great to see you. A panel is one thing, but actually Good improving morning. these staffing levels is a whole other thing. So when will that happen? Laura, I'm a very impatient person and I know the biggest challenge I face and our hospital system faces and New South Wales patients and their families face is properly staffing our hospitals and that's why this working group is important to get it underway. I've said very clearly to New South Wales Health and I've said it very clearly to the, parent, to the Nurses and Midwives Association that I want to get these rolling out in our hospitals as quickly as possible. I'll get the working group to provide me with some advice, but I deliberately wanted to make sure the workforce is involved in the implementation because I want to make sure we iron out any challenges or issues. I don't want it just to be done at a bureaucratic level. I want to make sure the workforce is involved and engaged with this so we can get it out to emergency departments across New South Wales as quickly as possible. Well, a lot of uh, these workers want a pay rise. Are you going to give it to them? Well, that's something that uh, obviously our Treasurer is working through uh, the unions with and that'll be something that he'll continue to have discussions with them about. That's something that um, I know is important to frontline workers and it's something that I know the Treasurer is engaged with them on. OK, so again, when it comes to... I know you're impatient, uh, Ryan, but when are we going to see adequate staffing levels? Well, I'd like to see some changes in our emergency departments start to take shape this year, but I want to not preempt what the working group come back with me in terms of advice. I want to make sure that I'm listening to them and taking that advice on. But I am impatient. Uh, this is something that I know is critically important. I get to hospitals every single week. Every single week I go to hospitals unannounced. Uh, and the feedback that I get time and time again is that staffing and resourcing our hospitals uh, is the most important issue. And that's why I wanted to get this implementation team underway and started as quickly as possible. Yeah, I know you've only had your feet under the desk for a little while, Ryan, so I don't expect you to have the solutions to vaping, but do you recognise this as a major problem in New South Wales and is it one of your priorities? Well, absolutely, it's one of my priorities and, yes, I do recognise it as a big problem. I come from a health and education background. I know the importance and the role in which our anti-tobacco and anti-smoking legislation has improved the quality of life for so many people. And I am concerned about the level of vaping, particularly in schools. I'm concerned both as a legislator and a policymaker and a dad. I've got a child who's going into or in year seven at high school this year. I'm very concerned and I'm certainly working actively with New South Wales Health and having a look at options that we can do from a New South Wales Health perspective mm. to make improvements in this area, particularly, Laura, I've got to say, with young people. Yeah, the anecdotal evidence is actually terrifying coming out of schools from teachers, school principals saying that it is happening even in primary schools. This, to me, Ryan, seems like one of the problems that we don't really have the hard data as to the extent of the problem across all age groups. Do you agree with that? Yeah, it's a challenge. I'll be brutally honest with you. It is a challenge getting that data. What I've asked New South Wales Health and what I've got some initial advice on is what areas that we might want to focus on. Some discussions I'm having with the Commonwealth has been positive. I've made it clear that this is a concern for New South Wales parents and families. I hear it every day in my own community and I hear people say to me when I'm out and about that this is a concern if they've got children, particularly in high school. And what we don't want to see is vaping to, to become the next smoking issue mm. and we have concerns in the relations to people's health going forward. That's not what we want to see. We want to make sure it's managed and controlled properly. I've got to have some discussions with my other Cabinet colleagues around specific changes, but I am working on possibilities yeah. with New South Wales Health. OK, good. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I mean, you're one jurisdiction, you can't do it alone. This needs to be right across the country. So how far progress are those discussions with the federal government and your uh, state counterparts? Well, look, I think they're fairly well progressed. I've had an initial discussion uh, with ministers and Minister Butler, and certainly I know that Minister Hazard 
um, was, uh, thought this was a very important issue and raised this. I think there'll be more to say from a Commonwealth level uh, going forward. I've also had some discussions mm. with my South Australian colleague, Chris Picton, around what his state's done in terms of some of their reforms. And I'm having a look at that and having a New South Wales Health look at those options at well. Oh, right. It's complex. So you're looking at banning, it, it... banning it in outdoor areas, which is the central part of what South Australia has done? South Australia have done that. I'm sort of looking at it across the board at the moment, Laura. Okay. I haven't landed on one particular issue, but I did ask uh, Chris Picton, the South Australia Health Minister, to give me some information about what his jurisdiction um, had been doing, and I've, got, I've received that information. I mean, I think it's important that we learn what other jurisdictions are doing. I've said that repeatedly mm. in healthcare for a long period of time, that if other jurisdictions are doing something well, then we need to have a look at that. And um, certainly that this will be an ongoing discussion, not trying to pass the buck, but it is an issue that revolves around national cooperation uh, and we'll continue to work towards that, whilst at the same time having a look at the, what we might be able to do at a state-based legislation. Nice one. Ryan, looking forward to having further discussions on that with you. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks a lot for having me.